Hey everyone, this is Christine Ballas. I want to wish you all a happy and blessed 2024 and a happy and blessed new biblical month. We are entering into the month of Shabbat. Now Shabbat is known as the month of trees. Right here, I have a tree beside me, and the Lord is calling us to be like a tree rooted and grounded in the love of God. So coming up is the chalkboard teaching, and I pray that you receive a fresh revelation of God's love for you. Even here in 2024, in the year 5784, it's the year of the door. I'm sitting in front of this door behind me as a picture of our hearts being open like a door to receive a fresh revelation of God's love for us. And I pray as you watch the teaching, you will receive a fresh revelation from him. And if you want to go deeper, we have resources available on our website. We have the His Appointed Times new calendar and journal study guide for 2024. We also have the wall calendar. We have blank journals. We have a whole bunch of resources that we have created to help you grow deep in the love of God even in this year. So check out our website and be blessed by this teaching. Get a fresh revelation of God's love and thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome to the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of Shabbat. And here in this month, the Lord is reminding us that we can prosper in any season. Yes, even here in the midst of winter, even in the midst of everything that's been going on in the world, and even in the midst of everything that's been happening here in our nation in the United States, we can prosper. And how do we do this? Well, the Word of God tells us very clearly that we we can prosper as we abide in Him. We will bear much fruit apart from Him. We can do nothing. So the Lord is highlighting this month that He wants us to be like a tree, like that Psalm 1 man that is rooted and grounded and planted because He meditates on the Word of God. And so I am blessed to um, uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you guys. My name is Christine Vallis, so thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that this teaching encourages you in your walk with Jesus. So last month was all about growing up in the month of Tevet. The Lord was highlighting the importance of maturing in Him. And now here in the month of Shabbat, it seems like He's showing us the importance of growing down, letting our roots go down deep as deep calls unto deep. And, um, you know, as we look at a tree, a tree is only prosperous above the surface if it is prosperous below the surface, when it's connected to the source of life. And even us, when we are connected to the Lord, we will bear much fruit. And, you know, we will be known by our fruit and they say the fruit is in the root. So if we're connected to him, we will bear much fruit and fruit that will last. Now, this month of Shabbat is also known as the month of trees. And um, actually, there is a holiday here in this month. It's on the 15th of Shabbat. It's known as the New Year of Trees. And it's like an Arbor Day in Israel where, where people plant trees. So you may consider planting a tree, um, but it's all pointing back to what the Lord is calling us to do, abiding in Him and in His Word. And, you know, as we begin a new year, you might have said to someone or someone may have said to you, well, have a healthy and happy and prosperous new year. And you know what? That's the Lord's will for us. In 3 John 2, it says this, Beloved, I wish that above all things you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. This is God's will for our life. This is God's desire for us, for our well-being, not only in our spirit, but in our physical body. And so how do we do this? We do it by meditating on God's word, 
by um, delighting in Him, knowing that He loves us, that's how we prosper from the inside out. So one of the key passages of Shabbat, I believe, is Psalm 1. Because as I go through it, I see that it almost hits every characteristic of the month of Shabbat. So I encourage you to meditate upon Psalm 1. You can even break out your Bible now as we go through the teaching or check it out later. So I'm going to read through Psalm 1 right now and then we're going to break it down and see how it applies to our our lives in real time so psalm 1 says this how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked he does not stand in the path of sinners nor does he sit in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night and he will be like a tree that is firmly planted by the streams of water. He will yield its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and whatever he does, he prospers. Psalm 1 continues on to say, the wicked are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So Psalm 1 is this comparison of a godly man versus an ungodly man, a man who is connected to his source versus a man who rejects God and wants to do his own thing. So let's start from the top. Right from the beginning, it says, blessed is the man. And so if you look up this word blessed, which means favored, you'll see it comes from the Hebrew root word, ashar. And that is an awesome root word when you, when you look at it because it actually means to be guided, to be directed, to, to go on a straight path. And it means one who advances by staying in the word. It means someone who is not self-sufficient, but is guided by another, guided by a good shepherd, guided by the word of God, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So that is the root word of this, of this word blessed. It is ashar. Now, when I heard that word meaning blessed, I thought ashar sounds really familiar, sounds something like the tribe that is connected to this month, which is the tribe of Asher, depicted here on the chalkboard. And so Asher is the eighth son of Jacob by Leah's maid Zilpah, and his name means goodness, fatness, and pleasure. And so these two things are very uh, connected. We'll see that Asher had the most fertile land in Israel, and they were a very prosperous tribe. And, you know, the tribe of Asher, they were the gardeners. They were farmers. They tended to the land that they were given, and they, they did a lot of planting and harvesting. And, you know, even in their land, they had an abundance of olive trees. And in fact, some of the olive trees on their land were over a thousand years old and still producing olives, which is awesome. And, you know, because they had this abundance of olive trees, they even had an olive tree on their flag. Now, I believe that that depicts the anointing of God that we have as royal priests because that anointing oil comes from the olive tree. And even that one new man that we are grafted in, as it talks about in the book of Romans. But the tribe of Asher, I was reminded of Psalm 37 that says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. So, you know, this tribe of Asher had a very fertile land, but they had to tend to it, right? They had to plant things in there. And so it, it's reminding me of Mark 4. You can have a great a parcel of land, this great soil, but you know, rocks can get in there, thorns can get in there. So it, when it says in Psalm 37, trust in the Lord and do good, it's, it's meaning take care of your land, take care of your heart, the soil of your heart, so that when you plant God's word in there, it produces much fruit. All right, so check out Psalm 37 and Mark 4, connecting to the tribe of Asher, 
future and we will bear much fruit if we have that good soil and if we properly maintain our, our parcel and we will yield 30, 60, even a hundredfold if that soil of our heart is good, we will produce much fruit. Fruit. Now, as Psalm 1 continues, we will see that the blessed man does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but he chooses wisely. This man has been given two, two choices, a path. You can go this way or this way. And it says that he does not walk or stand or sit with the ungodly but he chooses God's way and his instruction. And so I'm just reminded we have been given free will. God doesn't force us to choose him. He just wants us to willingly choose him because that's when it's real, right? So we have this free will. It's a gift from God. So you can choose, you know, two trees, basically, the tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so when we choose him, we will prosper. We choose life. When we choose the tree of life, which is his words, and as we consider him in all of our ways, as we delight ourselves in him, again, Psalm 37, he will give us the desires of our heart. Because in this month, as we move into a new year, we are making plans, but we want to consider him in our decisions. Because Let's face it, we are all going in a certain direction, but who are we getting our direction from? Meanwhile, we have this whole book, His Word, sitting probably on our, on our nightstand that gives us direction. Psalm 119, His Word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And also Psalm 119 verse 1 says that blessed and favored by God are those whose way is blameless. They walk in the law and they are guided by the precepts of of the Lord. So we will prosper when we choose him and his word is there. It is a lamp unto our feet. So Psalm 37 again says, commit your way to the Lord. He shall bring it to pass. He will bring forth your righteousness, your justice, like the noon day. So let's get into his word. Let's consider him, consider him in our decisions as we set forth in this new month, a new year. Now, Psalm 1 continues on, and it talks about this man that his delight is in the law of God. Now, sometimes when you read that, you say, how can I delight in the law? That seems so harsh, right? But here's the good news of the gospel, that Jesus fulfilled the law for us, so we are not under the law, but the law, really, the whole counsel of God, this is his word. And so we want to delight in the living word of God. Now think about it in like any relationship. When you hang out with somebody who is encouraging, they speak life to you, you want to hang out with that person more. Not many of us want to hang out with people that discourage us or bring doom and gloom or just negativity. Nobody wants to hang out with somebody like that, right? We want to hang out with people who bring life to us. And so that is the true nature of God. And that is really his word to us. It all goes back to the love of God. When we realize that God is love, that God is for us, he is not against us, that his will to prosper us, he has a bright future for us, guess what? We'll be drawn to go back to God's word. We want to hang out with him, right? John 6, 63 says, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. That's what we want, right? Don't we want a good word, especially as we enter into new year? What's your word, Lord? Well, he's got them for us. And so John 15 says, abide in in his word, right? And abide in his love. Apart from him, we can do nothing. So this is how we delight in God's word, knowing that we're loved by him. We're not going to delight in somebody's word if we don't know that they love us or that we can trust him. So faith, guys, works by love. So let's get in his word. Let's ask the Lord to reveal his great love for us every day. And we will have a hunger for the word of God. Because Psalm 1 continues, it says that in his law, the Psalm 1 man meditates upon his word day and night. 
He chews upon it. He ponders over it. And sometimes you can read that and think, isn't that boring? Well, it's not boring when you look at God's word like a love letter. Because if you get a love letter from someone who loves you, you don't just read it once and put it down, right? You say, let me read that again. Remind me again. Oh my gosh, look what he says about me. Look at the plans he has for me. I want to read that again. And you'll read it day and night, right? So that is the word of God. So it's easy to read it day and night. It's easy to meditate upon something that is actually giving life to you, that is quickening you. And we all meditate upon something. And these thought patterns will produce fruit, good or bad. And so again, as we ponder on God's word, we will produce great fruit. Proverbs 23, 7, check it out. It says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we are what we think. And guess what? We are also what we eat, right? We have heard that said before, but that's connected here in Shabbat because it is connected to our taste. This month it says here, eat the word. We want to taste and see that the Lord is good. We want to meditate upon the word of God. We just don't have a quick bite. We want to chew it. We want to Uh, taste it for all it has in there. We want to digest it, break it down because his word is a healthy diet. Proverbs 4.22 says that God's words are life to those who find them. We have to go and search them out and their health to our bodies. So health is a fruit of meditating and chewing on and digesting God's word. So when we think about starting a new year, we're all thinking about, let me change my diet. Let me eat healthier. Let me exercise. And then here, right in the word of God, it says, you want to have a healthy life? Chew on my word. Meditate on my word. Have a healthy diet of the word of God. Meditate, chew on it day and night, and it will be health to your body. The word of God is the healing agent. Jesus said, I sent my word and it healed them. So let's have a steady diet of the word of God. And so we are what we think, we are what we eat, and we are what we speak. Even here in this decade 5780, it's the decade highlighting our mouth. It's the decade of the scripture, Matthew 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Also, Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. Check it out. It says this, with the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with the fruit of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So we will eat the fruit of our lips, whether it's good or bad. We will eat our words, basically. So we want to speak life. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, but it all goes back to what we put in our hearts. So we want to keep this steady diet of the word of God, the fruit of our lips. And it all goes back again to guarding our heart, Proverbs 4, 2023. As we meditate on God's word, our thoughts will turn to actions and our actions will turn into the destiny that God has for us. The Lord says, Give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, not what the world says, not what everything's happening in the news and all that. Do not let my sayings depart from your sight, but keep them in the midst of your heart. Hide them in your heart because the enemy wants to steal them. So you got to hide them in there. Hide them down deep in your heart. Keep them in the midst of you. Watch over your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the springs of life. Now, Psalm 1 continues, and it says that this man will be like a tree that is firmly planted. And I love this because when I looked up that word planted, I realized that it's actually in Hebrew, it means transplanted. So when we meditate on God's word, we actually are being transplanted, or as Roman says, transformed by the renewing of our mind. We go from a place that is dry and barren and insecure when we think about 
ourselves, when we look at the world, when we think about the lies, when we meditate on anything other than the truth of God, it doesn't produce any good fruit. But when we meditate on his word, it transforms us. We get a firm, secure ground, we become fertile ground, and we're planted by streams of water. This is much better, right? We become prosperous when we are transformed, transplanted by the renewing of our minds of who God is, right? And who we really are in him. It's like we wake up to the reality of who we really are, our true identity. So I love this too. So we have to check again the soil of our heart so that we can have that good soil so that it goes down deep and it produces fruit. And in the Amplified Version, it says in Psalm 1 of this, that this tree will be firmly planted and tended to. So there is someone who is tending to you. And in Jeremiah, it says that he is watching over his word to perform it in our lives. So as we plant the word of God, there is seed time and harvest, and he is watching over his word to perform it in our lives. So all we have to do is plant his word in our hearts, abide in him, and he will cause that fruit to be produced in our lives effortlessly. He is the master gardener who loves us and has committed himself to us because of his great love for us. So that is so encouraging. And the other part of that verse says that we'll be firmly planted. In other words, we're going to be rooted. Proverbs 12, 3 says, a man shall not be established in wickedness. And it says that at the end of Psalm 1, the ungodly that is rooted in themselves blow away like the chaff, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. We become immovable. So how do we become righteous, right? This, this root of, of righteousness. Well, we become righteous through Jesus, that root of Jesse, Isaiah 11, the righteous branch. And it goes back to that other tree in scripture, the tree in the New Testament, the cross. That cross that Jesus died on, that tree, brought us right standing with God. That is what righteousness means. Having that right standing with him, we are no longer separated from God. So when we choose God, we become rooted in righteousness. That is our true identity. It's not in our works. It's trusting in him. And that is underscored this month with the Hebrew letter Sadie, right here in the trunk of the tree. The letter looks like this, and it means righteousness. And it also is the letter of life. It is the 18th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's also a picture of humility when you come to the Lord, right? And it also is a picture of someone that chews on the word of God. Again, not self-sufficient, but feeding on the word of God, not living by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. And so as we read through Psalm 1, it says he will be a tree firmly planted and not only firmly planted, but firmly planted by streams of water. And this is not just any water. These are streams of living waters. This is not stagnant water. It's living waters. And in fact, if you look up the word water in Hebrew, it can only be expressed in the plural tense. It can never be spoken of in the singular form. This is the picture of the Holy Spirit, these living waters. So it's saying to us that his spirit is inexhaustible. It's never ending. That's why it says my cup overflows. There's always more. And so when we receive Jesus into our heart, when we accept him and his work on the cross, his death, burial and resurrection, we become righteous, that right standing with God. And we receive the Holy Spirit 
and we are sealed with the Holy Spirit and we have all the fruit of the Spirit as talked about in Galatians 5. We have it to the full. And so we have this wellspring of life within us. But then when we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus talks about in Acts 1, this activates that wellspring within us. It gives us the power to do the works that Jesus did and even greater works. And so some of that manifests by praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. And the Lord says, hey, open your mouth and I will fill it. So I encourage you guys, if you've never had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is just ask and the Lord will give it to you. He will not withhold any good thing from you. And praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit refreshes us. It prays the perfect will of God. It is such a time saver. And it also brings up the wisdom of God that we have in our spirit. It's almost as if when we're praying the mysteries of God, it's like it sends a bucket down to the well in our bellies and it draws out that refreshing. It draws out that wisdom of God. Even Isaiah 12, 3 mentions this, with joy, you will draw waters from the wells of salvation. This is part of our inheritance. And you know, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And this month, the constellation is Aquarius and all of the constellations point to Messiah. And so Aquarius means the water carrier and so we carry the Spirit of God with us and his spirit refreshes us right so in this month ask the Lord you know Lord where do I need this refreshing where am I dry um, refresh me with with new fresh waters from your spirit and also let's be on the lookout for others that we can refresh others but we can't do that unless we are refreshed ourselves right so we have this living water within us for ourselves that the Lord freely gives us to overflowing so that we can also minister life to others now lastly it says in Psalm 1 the blessed man or woman yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither and whatever he does he prospers now I want you to compare Psalm 1 with another portion of scripture. It's Jeremiah 17, 5 through 8. And this is almost word for word for Psalm 1. So verses 7 and 8 say this, The man is blessed and he does not fear when heat comes. He doesn't fear when the heat is on. And his leaves are always green. And he has no worries in a year of drought. And he never fails to bear fruit. So how is this possible? Again, it's only because this man or woman of God is connected to a supernatural source. He's not trying to sustain himself. He realizes that he is not his own, that everything he gets in life comes from God. Apart from him, we can do nothing. But when we abide in him, we are transplanted, transformed by the word of God. We are attended to by the master gardener and we are his planting. Um, I love this. Isaiah 61 3 says that they will be called oaks of righteousness. That is a strong tree, right? In that righteous standing. We will never lose that righteousness because it's from Jesus himself and we will be called the planting of the Lord. We are his so that he may be glorified. So we bear much fruit to the glory of God because we produce fruit not in our own strength, but only as we abide in him. So that's why we can shout that our blessings are on the way, even as we move into this new year, that we have a hope and a future in him. We do not have to fear the future because as we abide in him, we will bear fruit effortlessly and in due season without striving or straining. And, you know, I was just reminded of Psalm 46 that says, you know, be still, cease striving and know that I am God. And the verses before that say, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. That is the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say that God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. So be still, cease striving, and know that I am God 
I will be exalted amongst the nations. This is, I believe, a fresh word from God, fresh encouragement, fresh security, a fresh reminder of who we are and how we can put our trust and just be still in Him and we will bear much fruit. I pray that you are encouraged through this teaching on Shabbat and through Psalm 1, through the Word of God. And so, Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that it is your desire for us to prosper and to be in health even as our soul prospers. And Lord, we thank you that your, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. All we have to do is abide in you and we will bear much fruit. So thank you, Lord, for your great love for us, because when we know we're loved, we will easily abide in you. In fact, we will run to you, and then we will just bear much fruit, fruit that will last. As in closing, I want to read Psalm 92, verses 12 through 14 from the New Living Translation, and it says, the godly will flourish like palm trees. They will grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, for they will be transplanted to the the Lord's own house. They will flourish in the courts of God, and even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green, and they will declare, the Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in Him. Thanks so much for listening. Let's keep on up abiding in him and we will bear much fruit, even the fruit of our lips. So let's keep on declaring the goodness of God to our own souls and to others as we move into and through Shabbat and into this new year with him. Blessings guys and thanks for listening.